In this video I'm going to be demonstrating a smartphone gimbal or handheld stabiliser if you will. It's the kind of thing that for years people have been asking me if I'd do a video about but I've never been able to afford one. Luckily these UO Play chaps got in touch and asked me to demonstrate this one to you. So I'm showing it to you here today but full disclosure of course I got this free of charge. Now if we have a look at this introduction document, it explains a little bit more about what the point of this thing is. A three-axis smartphone gimbal stabiliser with gyroscopes and brushless motors which will get you the kind of effects that only a few years ago would have been impossible for your amateur photographer. Now let's have a look inside the box here, we'll go through all the things, I've laid them out here, there's a couple of things extra there, I'll show you those in a moment, but first off you get the handheld gimbal stabiliser, very nice it is too, and then we've got the batteries and a charger and a USB lead to plug that charger into your normal USB charging plug. You only need to use two batteries at a time inside the gimbal, so you can be charging two whilst you're using the other two. We've also got a little weight here which you use when you're using the gimbal with a larger phone like an iPhone 6 Plus as well as two instruction booklets but actually it's the same instruction booklet just in multiple languages and the English section you can see on the right hand side in the middle there only takes up a few of those pages and I'll be honest with you it doesn't actually make a lot of sense there's a few pictures there but it's missing quite a bit of information that I needed to figure out how this thing worked anyway I figured it out myself and I'm going to demonstrate all these things to you here today but I'd suggest watch this video rather than read the instructions if you do get one of these now here's the page with the specifications on it if you look towards the bottom there you can see that the battery life on this thing is somewhere between three and five hours that's quite good really and remember you get two sets of batteries for it Right, let's take a look around the gimbal. We've got a rubberized handle here. There's a couple of buttons where my thumb is and a little joystick type device above those. There's an LED on there as well. Tripod screw mount on the bottom. And if you unscrew the bottom of it, that's where the two batteries go inside. So we'll just put the batteries in it now. Um, that's a nice little cap as well, well constructed. There's no sort of springs or anything. It's all internal, very well put together this. So anyway, put those batteries in there, screw that cap back on at the bottom again, and we'll just have a look at this thing in action. So at the moment it's all floppy, and then we have to turn it on by holding down the left button. See, we've got the two buttons there. We've got a shutter button and a power button, and then a joystick there. Now the shutter button does multiple things, but you've got to watch this little LED at the top. Anyway, hold down the power button for a couple of seconds. It comes on. You can see the red LED is on, but it's in standby. To get it to actually operate, tap that power button again, and it comes to life. Now there are three main shooting modes, I'll show you them one after the other. The first one, we've got it in now with the red light flashing. And if we move the joystick side to side, you can see it adjusts the roll of the camera. You can see it tilting there a little bit side to side. If we push it up and down, the camera goes forward or back, points up and down. So you can adjust the tilt and then the roll on the camera that way. And if you twist the handle, the camera will follow you. It takes a little bit of time, but it smoothly follows you. But if you move it up and down, the camera stays flat, as in pointing in the direction you adjusted it to with the joystick. It doesn't uh, tilt. So the next mode, double tap, goes into this green flashing LED. Now this one, again, if we twist it side to side, it'll follow us. But when we point it down or up, you can see the camera also points down or up. It's twisting ever so slowly there, nice and smoothly. So what does the joystick do in this one? Well, if you move it left and right, nothing at all. It doesn't do anything in that mode. But if you push it forward and back, you get that same tilt there. That's very good for just getting it just right. You're framing just perfect when you're doing stuff. Anyway, third mode, double tap again on the right hand button. Blue light flashing now. Now this one holds the camera pretty much as steady as it can get. So whatever I do with the handle, the camera tries to stay in pretty much the same position and pointing in the same direction. If I want to adjust the direction, I have to do it by using the little joystick. Now there is one additional mode at the end here. If we triple tap the right hand button, it goes vertical. So you could, if you were completely balmy, start videoing in vertical video mode with your camera pointing that way around. But there is another use for that later on, which I'll show you in a bit. So triple tap to get back out of that. Now, if you want it to go to sleep, just tap the left button. There you are, nods off. To actually turn it off though, you have to hold down that left button for a few seconds. See, it came straight back on when I tapped that left button. So to turn it off completely, hold down the left button a couple of seconds, it powers down. And now you see a single tap won't bring it back to life again. Now I'll show you what it looks like with my phone in it. The phone goes in this part rather obviously, but these edges here, spring loaded at the top there, 
just like one of those car mounts that you get for your phone so you put it inside there rubberized coating on the inside and on the right hand side as well so it's not going to scratch your phone i'm using an iphone 6 plus not a 6s plus just a 6 plus quite a large phone and when you use a larger phone like this you have to put an additional weight on the side here a counterweight which is what they provide you inside the box so you screw that onto the end there and you're all ready to go now of course if you use a smaller phone you won't need to use that counterweight now i've already got this turned on so if we bring it out of standby we can see it wakes up and the phone goes into this horizontal position as we mentioned before and you've got to get used to this idea of kind of twisting the handle if you want to point the camera uh, in either direction it does become more natural the more you use it and i did find i was using all three of the shooting modes because you might want to get the camera just right in one mode for example pointing perfectly straight and then move it into the next mode so it can't move out of that position no matter what you do with the handle it all comes very natural after only a few minutes now on the handle itself we've got the button there for the shutter as you can see there it starts the camera recording that's a bluetooth connection that i've set up earlier on just by adding a bluetooth device to the phone and once you've got the camera mounted in the gimbal of course that button comes in very handy if you excuse the pun because it enables you to do all your shooting one handy without having to reach up and touch the screen now there are a couple of optional accessories available for this and they were kind enough to send these to me as well so i can demonstrate them to you you can decide whether or not they're any use to you first off we've got this little remote control it's got the joystick on just like the gimbal itself and the button for the shutter as well on the top there and it's a nice little thing you can see it's got a little loop on there to perhaps put it on a belt or something or key ring whatever and you can charge it at the bottom through that usb port there first thing let me just take the plastic off that because i never like that stuff there you are nice and shiny now let's have a go with this but first off we'll put something into that tripod screw mount on the bottom i've got a little tripod i've just put it on there i know the tripod's way too small but it gives you an idea so now we've got it on there you can see we can use this remote to first off we'll hold it down to turn on the remote you see a blue light comes on there so now the remote's activated and i can twist the camera around using that little joystick there it goes uh, left to right up and down everything you'd expect and of course in addition to that you can use that shutter button on the top to start and stop recording so um it's a handy little thing perhaps if you need to do some sort of remote shooting like that not something i particularly need but if you do that's what it does now the next thing is something that i think might be more used to more people and that's the protective carrying case it's hard sided it comes with a shoulder strap that i've taken out of it already inside we've got all these moldings that's got a little strap on it there so you can put the batteries underneath that and that keeps those nice and secure there's a space in there to hold that counterweight so that goes in there then we've got all this a molded area where we can put the gimbal in there and it holds it nice and securely and safely inside there stops it getting scratched we could also perhaps put the little remote in there and that usb charging lead as well if we want so everything fits in there and as i say it has a shoulder strap but i haven't got it attached to it but i think that's quite a nice little case anyway let's have a look how this thing actually operates so here i am walking through liverpool got a lovely sunny day to test this out so i put my iphone into the uh, gimbal and walking down the street this is my very first attempt at using it so as the day went on i actually got better with my shooting technique but as you can see there inlaid at the top left that's what the camera can see once it's in the gimbal and just look how smooth that is i say this is my first attempt so i'm pointing it all over the place like some kind of crazy person but as you get a bit more practice you learn what looks good on the screen and what looks a little bit manic and how to get very smooth movements by just twisting that handle a little bit just to pan around ever so smoothly anyway i'll show you some more shots that i shot can i say that is that a bad thing should i go and re-edit it no i'm going to leave it in shots that i shot out and about in liverpool so let's have a look at some more of this i'll shut up for a moment just let you have a look and a listen in your own piece without me going on see i'm still going on now but i'll be quiet now honestly any second okay now
I'm back. I couldn't leave you alone. Sorry. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention that come up on screen in a second. First off, this is me panning nice and slowly to the left, but I'm going to twist the handle quickly and it'll come back to the right as quickly as the camera can do. So there you go. That's a quick pan back to the right, but still nice and smooth. You know, it's all dampened at the end there. Slows down a little bit. Don't pay too much attention to how well the camera's recording things. Remember, we're not reviewing an iPhone 6 Plus here. We're reviewing a gimbal, but you can see it's nice holding shots like that perfectly still. It's almost like you've got a tripod with you. And that's one thing that I appreciated during the course of the day, how you can get really brilliantly still shots. One thing that people quite often ask me about my videos, they say, how come your YouTube videos look so good? And there's no trick to it, I'm no expert. There's just a couple of things that I always say. Number one, good lighting. And number two, use a tripod and that's it. But this thing, of course, when you're out and about shooting stuff, you can't usually set up a tripod. I know you can, but it's quite often a big pain in the bum. And there's quite a lot of places now that don't let you use a tripod. Well, if they're the kind of place that would let you use this, and I don't know if they are, you can stand on a spot and you can get shots that almost look as good as you were using a tripod. In fact, I say almost, I think they look better because you try moving a tripod head around smoothly, unless it's a really nice one, you're going to get jerky movement. Again, I'm stood here perfectly still. Look at the lines on the floor. Look at that one going across where that person's walking. Look how accurate it is at keeping that within the bottom of the frame there. So it's like the thing's perfectly framed. Now, when I first got this thing, I thought, well, I'll be using it for a few shots. It'd be a bit of a laugh. I'll go and take some video. I'm sure it'll look quite nice. The kind of thing that you'd use as a novelty maybe every now and then. Uh, but the more I used it, the more I realised how good it is at getting all sorts of shots. I don't think I'd want to shoot my entire holiday footage on this, but say you were walking around a town, as I am now, or just certain shots that you can't get very well with a normal camera. All this stuff where I'm shooting to one side but walking forwards is something that's uh, pretty difficult to get with a normal camera because as soon as you twist your hand around, say you're holding a little compact camera, point it to the right, you get the angle off, you end up tilting your wrist up and down because you're not looking at the camera screen. Well, I'm not looking at the camera screen here, I'm walking perfectly straight at the moment, even though the camera's looking over there, I'm just walking in a straight line. But because I've got it set in that mode that holds the camera steady at a certain angle, it means it doesn't tilt when you go left and right. But again, that was just one of those three modes. I was using all three. Uh, this is the one where you sort of tilt it down using your hand, not with the joystick. You just tilt it down and then you move it to the right and it follows you ever so slowly. So in effect, all I'm doing here is pointing the camera, but it's, it's doing it in a lovely smooth way that my uh, hand can't emulate. Again, this is one of those ones where I'm walking forwards, but I've got the camera pointing sideways and you get that nice uh, side on view as well. Now I did another couple of shots. So you see the day's going on. This is all in the uh, order that it happened, by the way. So I went around the docks at Liverpool and I went up into the town. So this is quite a nice shot. This is one where I've got the camera locked on that um, gimbal in a certain position. So whatever I did with my hand, it wouldn't move. And then I held it and walked over the fountain here, which was popping up and down every now and then. So I had to be careful it didn't uh, get the camera or the phone, I should say, all wet. Now this is a test going up steps. Here's something that's a really good test of a stabilizer. So as you can see here, I'm walking up. What I did as I was walking, I used a joystick there just to tilt the camera ever so slightly uphill. So it's not just looking at steps, it's also looking at the sky as well. Now remember, whilst this is happening, this is around about sort of my knee height, so I can't see the screen on the camera, but you can see the way the uh, phone's tilting, so you kind of get an idea as to what's going to be in shot. And again, a quick pan around here, probably too quick to be honest. If I'd shot this in a normal video, I'd probably edit it out, but I just wanted to show you how smooth everything is. And then as an extra treat, I went up the tower and got a few shots there as well, just to give you... Uh, a few little shots out over Liverpool because it was such a lovely sunny day you could see for miles so here I'm just walking around the top and you can see the people down at the bottom there but yeah I was really impressed I mean this is the kind of thing that as I say I didn't think could be something that I'd use this much but I don't really use my phone for taking video normally because I just don't like the results but once it's put into this it's very impressive I think I'll have to upgrade my phone at some point and get one with a a 4K video capability because I was um, I was pretty impressed with the way that this one performed. 
Right, if I'm trying to find a few things negative to say about this, there aren't really many. If you turn it off, be careful you don't hit your phone screen on it. Remember, the whole thing's made out of aluminium or aluminium, if you like to call it that. Metal, in other words. You don't really want to be smashing your screen with a piece of metal. The other thing is, that counterweight, it doesn't enable the thing to twist all the way around. It fouls the bottom uh, when it's on there. It doesn't affect the way the camera works when you're recording. It's just about putting it away in storage that you have to take that counterweight off all the time. It'd be nice if you didn't have to take it off uh, but you can put it on this part here if you want to store it whilst you're out and about the other thing is i'm sure people will be wondering what's the biggest phone that you could get in here well you can't really get anything bigger than an iphone 6 plus in its case remember i've got mine in my case so that's how wide one of those is uh, just in case you haven't got those measurements to hand or you don't know how to get to google that's how wide an iphone 6 plus with its case on is you're supposed to be able to maybe put a little action camera in here like a gopro or something i don't have a gopro but i'll put the uh, xiaomi camera in here well I'll try anyway you see it's falling out doesn't have enough uh, depth on the camera to grip in there i tried it with a git up git one perhaps i'm not too sure which one this one is uh, and to use it you have to turn it into the vertical mode remember that's the one where you triple press the right hand button and that's where you'd use a camera in vertical mode but that's the one you'd also use for a little camera like this i will say though i don't think it's suitable it doesn't hold it firmly enough in there just due to the amount of purchase it can get on the case so what i think you're probably best doing is getting a block or something with a tripod screw mount that you've hold on the gimbal and then that goes into the bottom of the camera maybe some sort of adapter you can make yourself something to think about anyway the other thing is the led pretty hard to see sometimes it's nice and bright but it's just the angle you have to really get the angle just right to be able to see down that hole to see that led but this thing is beautifully made i haven't really got into that but the quality of this thing is amazing it's like aircraft grade manufacture everything on it is metal and i say aluminium aluminum whatever you want to call it uh, rubber coated it just feels really good and it looks like a piece of quality equipment so you don't want to damage it i recommend buying that protective case for it you really don't want this thing bashing around in a camera bag now whether or not you need to buy that additional remote control entirely down to you not something i particularly need but i can see how other people might need it so when i got this thing i thought well bit of fun have a play around with it i'll show it to you no idea how much it was going to cost either they didn't tell me the price i after using it thought this thing would be like 500 pounds or something i mean honestly i really haven't got a clue i'd be terrible on the prices right turns out it's about 300 and odd dollars 200 and odd quid i've got some links to ebay and uh, amazon in the video description and of course those prices might change by the time you're watching this if you're watching this in 2035 i'm sure the price will be slightly different uh, but you can get shots like this that you just can't get walking around without falling over and cracking your head on the floor the camera's pointing all over the place and i'm just walking forwards i think this thing is very impressive i've never thought i would want a gimbal uh, and now after using one i don't think i'd want to be without a gimbal but anyway that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.